Hello, this eHelp video covers the ESI web phone, which is available on ESI's eCloud service. This video specifically will go over various menu options, which includes voicemails, call history, contacts, chat, and SMS texting. All right, so let's get started. I am logged into my eConsole, and if you look over to the left navigation menu, when you click on your name, a separate menu here will appear and give you various options depending on what has been authorized for your extension. In this case, we look for ESI Web Phone because we want to launch that. So here I see ESI Web Phone. I click on that and it opens uh, ESI Web Phone in a different win window. Now notice that the window is smaller and minimized. There's a lot of users that are going to like and want to use this view, but you can actually use Web Phone in what is called a maximized view where it does take up your whole screen. Um, and that may be more useful to other users. So regardless of which view you're using, you have all the same options um, regardless. So for example, in the smaller view, we still have contacts, voicemails, we have our call history, and we have our chat and SMS. And then if I click on the little um, hamburger menu here, you can also see things such as answering roles, greetings, and settings. Now, uh, I have found through training that a lot of people uh, understand web phone a bit better when it's in the maximized view. So I'm gonna go to that view now. So we're gonna click on the maximize icon up in the title bar. And this is what the maximize view looks like. And you'll notice here on the left navigation menu, you have all of those same options. So let's start with our contacts. So contacts is pretty straightforward. You get all your contacts from either the system, such as the coworkers and other extensions on your system, or from what you have um, imported into your e-console. All of those same uh, contacts that you have will appear here. So here I am showing all of my contacts but I may wanna look at my personal or business related contacts. I can filter by coworkers. And notice that for coworkers, uh, whether in this view or if you're looking at all of your contacts, we actually provide station status. So Zach, for example, he has a phone that is registered and he is idle. And I can tell that because the little handset icon is green. If it were red, that would mean that Zach is actually on an active phone call. It's also um, helpful to know that if you look up here in the corner under my little icon uh, for myself, you see this little blue square, if you will. If the blue square is also shown on your various coworkers, that means that they actually have their web phone up and running as well, or their uh, e-console, um, which is a good thing to know, especially if you're trying to send them a chat, which we'll review later. Okay, now the other thing that you can do uh, for coworkers is once you have selected that, you can actually uh, sort those by showing only those people that are online or only those people that are busy. So let's go back up to the all so we can see all of our contacts. Another important thing, especially if you have a pretty decent sized company or you have a robust set of contacts, you really don't want to be filtering or uh, scrolling through this list because it'll be hard to find a contact. So you have a few different options besides just the filtering. You can search for a contact. For example, if I go in here and start typing the name Brian, it's going to find me everybody that uh, matches the term Brian. You can also search by phone number. So if I decided to type in 972 from my uh, PC, you can see that it's pulling up everybody who has 972 in their number, okay? Now, even though Michelle, you don't see 972, I happen to know that if you open her contact information, she does actually have a second uh, phone number assigned to her that um, is a full phone number that includes 972. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the search part out. I can also uh, sort, so depending on whatever uh, filter, so again, let's say I go over here to coworkers and I wanna filter by um, first name instead of last name, I can certainly do that. I am actually gonna go back and change it to last name here. Um, you also have uh, sorting it by the extension number or whether the person is online. All right, and then lastly here, you can actually add a personal contact. So if you click on this, it's pretty straightforward, first name, last name, three different phone numbers, and then one email address. You type that information in here and they will become 
uh, one of your contacts under the uh, generic contact classification. Okay, so one of the other things you may notice here is favorites. Well, how do you make somebody a favorite? So let's go um, into our all contacts here. Let's just pick Lisa and open her contact. And notice the red circle here. If I click on the star and it is a solid white, that means that she is now a favorite. So if I go back over here under favorites, it should right here show Lisa. Okay, so pretty simple, uh, straightforward stuff there. Okay, let's jump into call history. So call history is pretty straightforward. You have your caller ID, uh, name and number if it's provided. You have the duration of the call and date and time. It will show based on the little uh, icon arrows whether it's inbound, outbound, or missed. Outbound is the green going out, and then inbound is blue going in, and then you'll see red if it happens to be a missed call. All right. Once you click on the call history, it will give you a little more um, information here, such as the specific date and time, and then of course how you can interact with this call record, either calling them, using it for chat or SMS, and you can actually create a new contact from here or add to an existing contact, which is really helpful. All right, so let's go back to our main view and let's go to our voicemail. A voicemail, again, pretty common, basic uh, feature. So you have your caller ID, uh, name and number if it's provided, then you have your uh, duration and time, date and time. Also notice that if you happen to uh, subscribe to the transcription service, that you will actually see a transcription snippet here in your web phone and know that um, to see the full transcription, it actually gets emailed to you, but it is helpful to get that little snippet in here so that you can see um, what the call is about with actually, without actually having to call into voicemail or playing it here from your web phone. So um, how you interact with your voicemail is you can click on play, and as soon as you do that, it's gonna start playing out of your PC, all right? Uh, you can, of course, uh, click pause, you can move this up and down depending on where you want to go. You can call this number back. You can save this new voicemail as old. You can forward it to a different extension. And I'll just click on that real quick. So when you click forward, it's going to go to your coworkers list and you just find out the coworker that you want and then it will send that off to them. I don't want to do that right now for this voicemail, so I'm going to go back. And then, of course, lastly, you can delete the message. Now, here's an important point. So when you delete a message that puts it in your trash bin, you do not see your trash bin from the web phone. You actually go into eConsult to see your trash bin. Remember, if you didn't know this already, that um, your trash bin gets emptied out every day. So if you know that you put something in the trash bin that you didn't mean to, then make sure you get back into your voicemail um, whether it's here or in eConsole, or I'm sorry, go into eConsole and move that uh, voicemail from trash to old um, so that it doesn't get deleted. Okay, so how would you filter between old and new? So if you go up here to the top where it says voicemail, you have new and saved. What we're looking at right now is new, but if I click on save, there's the list. Obviously, it's much shorter, okay? But you can still have all the same options sorry it's playing back in my ear but you have all the same options there except for um, saving as new because that's not possible once you save it as old it's saved as old forever all right let's go ahead and look at our chat and sms here and so a reminder that we have another video in eHelp or on our esi youtube channel that talks about in detail chat and SMS and how all of that works. So I would highly recommend uh, going to that video if you are um, interested in these features and how to use them su successfully. But whatever is talked about in that video, you can do those things here in WebPhone, not just eConsole. So here I'm looking at a list of my um, current chats and SMS texts, right? So for example, Catherine McDonald, um, it's going to show me the, the name of the person, uh, the last thing that I sent them, which is hello, the fact that this came into me, so this is an inbound um, text or chat, 
and outbound would be that I sent this chat or SMS to Arthur. And then it tells me uh, my, or how long ago I did this. So let's just open up the one for Catherine McDonald as an example. Now notice here, it does give me more information. I can clearly see that this is an SMS chat, um, or I'm sorry, an SMS text, because chat is only internal, which means chat is between an extension and another extension on the same domain or the same company site. But here, obviously this is a full phone number, which means I have sent Catherine an SMS text, okay? And here, once I have it open, I can reply back whatever I want to. Um, it goes to her um, SMS number, which is more than likely on her cell phone, and then she'll send me a message back once she gets that, okay? Um, notice also that once I have this window open, um, I may want to keep this up, but I don't really kind of want it up in my face like it is now. So I click on this little minus sign that's in the corner, and it kind of docks it over into your main um, display area over here, which is, uh, again, pretty helpful. Um, if I go and click on the ellipses, the three dots in the corner, that gives me a few options. Again, I can call this uh, phone number. I can delete this SMS chat or I can open this up to viewer contact because maybe I need to get a different phone number from her because she's not responding or maybe send her an email if I have her email and her contact. The important thing to note about delete is that once you click delete, it erases the current uh, SMS or chat history you have. So in this context, um, let's bring it back up again by just clicking on that window. So this if I were to click delete, it's gonna erase everything from hello all the way down. And it's not something that we can get back. We do not keep this information on our servers, okay? All right, so I'm gonna minimize that again and dock it over there. Let's open one that's to an extension. Um, I think Arthur would be a good example. So again, it's all the same format. You can see the same interaction. It's just that for him, it's an extension instead of a phone number. Uh, but I can type him um, you know, a message back and then I can do the same thing here where I call, delete, or view his contact. Um, one thing to note, um, like I mentioned before, the little blue box that's right here, again, you can see that up over here on my name. It shows that I have eConsole up and open. So I can send this off to Arthur, which is completely fine, but I can tell that he doesn't have eConsole open, so he's not going to get this message. He'll get it once he goes into eConsole, and he'll see that he has messages waiting for him, um, but if I need him urgently, um, it's a good thing to note so I can find him in another way, like email or uh, call him on a different number. Okay, so I'm going to, again, dock this conversation over here. So I can have up to six, well, actually five windows uh, because your summary card, which we talked about in the previous video, always stays up here. Okay, so this is your chat history. Now, how do you start a new chat? Okay, follow by cursor. We're gonna go all the way over here to the corner to our uh, red plus, and you click on the um, edit looking icon where it says new conversation, and you would either scroll through or look for um, your number. So I'm typing in Pippa here, and I wanna send her an SMS chat. How do I know I can do that? Well, first of all, clearly I have SMS, SMS enabled, um, but it also tells me, hey, you can send this person an SMS chat using my DID that supports SMS, which is blah, 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 nine, 7025, right? So if I click here on Pippa, um, I can again uh, send her a text and just enter. It goes off to her and then she can reply and we sit here and have our conversation. Um, the big thing about SMS, which again is pointed out in the other video we have, is that you are communicating with people primarily that are using SMS on their smartphones like we all do every day. The difference is that you're initiating and doing that interaction from your PC, which is super convenient um, when maybe you have something uh, long uh, to type out to somebody um, or a quick way to get in touch with customers um, when you're in the middle of doing other work. So super handy. So I'm going to, again, minimize that, and it just keeps adding to my home page. Okay, let us go over here to some of our other options in the menu. You have answering rules. So you cannot create answering rules within a web phone. You actually need to do that in eConsole. And just in case you've never done that before, um, you would go um, here in eConsole. There's answering rules here, 
and this is where you would go in and add uh, various answering roles. This is only available for a premier seat or higher, meaning premier, office manager, uh, supervisor, um, I believe has that as well. Um, if you need an answering role, an office manager can create an answering role if you don't have access to that. Anyway, so whatever answering roles that you have in here um, are going to appear here in this list. And you can have numerous answering roles. And what you want to do is move those answering roles around from top to bottom, um, depending on how, like the priority and when those answering roles need to be accessed. Uh, we do have a completely different video on answering roles in and of itself. So if you're interested in answering roles, I would watch that. And this will make a lot more sense on how you move those around, okay? Greetings. So this is a really, um, I think a really nice feature, especially for like salespeople or support staff, uh, which are um, really need to make sure customers know where they are. So you can make a greeting again uh, through eConsult, which is totally fine. And all those uh, greetings will appear here, but you can actually create a greeting within WebPhone itself. So I would go up here to the plus sign for greeting. I would give this a name. Um, let's say maybe uh, lunchtime. I want to have something different play when I'm at lunch. So uh, when I, once I click on the big record button here, I'm actually recording through the microphone that I have with my PC. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to say, hey, it's Julia. I'm at lunch for the moment. I'll be back um, in 45 minutes. Please leave me a message. Something really simple. Then I click stop. I have the option of uh, playing it back. So click on this and it'll play back through my headphones or my speaker. I can redo it if it sounds bad and or I can select save, which I'm going to do. And so uh, notice here you don't actually see it. That's because you need to refresh your window. You can refresh your window by pressing F5 or if you go up here and right click, just click reload. And it reloads everything. So go back over to greetings and there is um, a lunchtime a greeting. So what you can do here is you can have multiple greetings. It's actually unlimited. And depending on what you're doing during the day, you would simply go over here and say, hey, I need to enable this greeting. And then it's set and you can go. And then when you come back from your lunch, you'd go up here to normal and you could set that as well, right? So you're going to want to look for the um, greeting that has the green check mark. That's the one that's actually enabled and playing to you, uh, to your callers. Okay, let's look at settings. Um, the, really, there's one main setting. There's ringtones. So you do actually have ringtones. The, this will be the ringtone that plays through your speaker or your headset that's with your PC. Um, so just click on whichever radio button so you can hear what it sounds like and then pick the one that you like and that's the ringtone that you will get. Okay. You also hear have at the end log out. Pretty standard. You log out. When you go back to get into web phone, it's going to ask you to log back in with your credentials, a pretty standard. Okay, let's go back up here to the top under my name. And this is where I'd access my profile. So obviously here is my name and my email address. You could add another email address here if you wanted to. Uh, just remember that um, you want to actually, if you do have an email address in here, you want to make sure that it's valid because this is the email address that is used for uh, voicemail notification um, and uh, your uh, SMS, or I'm sorry, not SMS, but your transcription, if you have that service enabled, so it's important to put valid information in there. Now, you'll notice one thing up here, it has my name and my extension and my domain, which is great, but maybe I don't like the fact that it just says JK, I want to be a little flashier than that, and put an icon or Gravatar. So it says here, add a profile picture using Gravatar. So click on this, now, I realize that this screen looks a little intimidating. It's really not that hard. You are going to have to create an account um, where you would sign in. And its uh, Gravatar site here is really good at walking you through um, either choosing a Gravatar that they have or uploading a picture of what it is you want. And once you do that, then that is the little picture. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let me bring up the right window. That will be the picture that appears here and to other people. Um, we will have these instructions, though, also in our documentation, um, so you can follow those if you get confused, all right? Okay, so we're going to um, leave this recording um, at that, and we have many other recordings on uh, placing calls, taking calls, using various features like transfer, 
um, hold and three-way conference. So look out for those. Thank you very much for your time.